Hey guys, uh, Fro here. Welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about the differences between APIs versus webhook. Uh, this is something that is very common in the application development space. So even data integration space for organizations looking to externalize uh, different parts of their systems, either using APIs or using webhooks. APIs are more common, but if you've heard about webhooks, what is the difference? And I'm going to illustrate that uh, very quickly today. Now, we're going to use an example just to hit home of what an API is. So if you think about your typical 3T application, you have a front end. In this case, we have the example of physically.io. You can come in, you can query that front end. It pulls a database behind the scenes and it gives you a result. Now, the way the front end talks to the back end that pulls that information, in this case, physical calendars, is using an API. And so you can choose what company you want to see. You can choose what sticker you want to see. And the front end talks to the back end using an API. So let's bring that back home here on the screen. So if you can imagine, we have our, our front end users here. and We have some resource in the back end here. And this could be, you know, our stocks. Or this could be companies. This could be any uh, resource. Or this could be some machine learning model. Now, if a user using a browser, and I'm going to do a terrible job of drawing a browser here, uh, is trying to access this resource, typically you interact with that using uh, a communication channel, which is facilitated by APIs. And APIs have been very common as REST. You hear about RESTful, RESTful APIs. And RESTful APIs has a couple of characteristics or a couple of functions. So you can either do a GET, our function, you can do a post, you can do a put, or you can do a delete. Right, so as a user, you can come in to say, hey, I want to get stocks for for Apple. I believe, is that Apple? Or you can say, I want to get stocks for Tesla. And that will be a get method. So you do an HTTPS request https request and in that request you specify that you're doing a get and so it's going to go find the record for apple get it and send it back to you you can do a post which a post is basically you want to create a new record in here let's say there wasn't a record here for the snow as an example uh, and a post would create one a put would be a very similar but it would update the resource and then a delete would be to say hey if i don't want apple to show up here Let's go ahead and delete that. And this is APIs. APIs are very well known. Now, what is a webhook? What is the difference between an API and, and a webhook? Now, a webhook is very similar to an API, but the emphasis of the web, webhook would be to post. So what I would say is a, a webhook, if we were to draw a triangle like this, where this is API, and within API, we have uh, put, we have get, we have um, uh, post, and then we have delete. A webhook would be a subset of this. So this would be your webhook, which focuses on, on just the post side of things. So you might say, or what people would tend to say, a webhook is a subset or is a lightweight version of of um of an api so it's a, it's a subset of the api functionalities with webhook you typically don't do delete you typically don't do get you typically would just do uh, put it still goes over https you're still hitting an endpoint right but the only thing you're doing is you're posting a message now where would users uh typically want to use a webhook uh, and this is where the big differentiation between a webhook and an API comes into play. So let's just write a title here again, API versus webhook. So the focus now here is a webhook. You would hear some folks who call a webhook as a webhook would be uh, a reversed or a reverse API. Some folks will say a webhook is a reverse API. It's some folks in the industry will use that. Now, what does that mean? A webhook would typically be used for event type of, of driven. So let's say you have the scenario here of we have a resource here. And this is our database with our stocks. 
right? And this is um, this is uh, our user. Let's actually move this to the side. So let's just move this uh, along. So this is our user here. The user has a mobile phone. And then this is our database. And within this database, we have our stocks very similar to what we had above there. So we have Apple, we have Snow, we have Tesla, and we have all the stocks here. So let's say we have a, a system in here that is monitoring. And if the stock price changes, if the, the change in the stock price delta is greater than 5%, we should send a message to this user to alert them that this stock price has changed by by more than by more than five percent so we should send a message let's use a different pen here we should send a message to user so what you will notice is in this case we are monitoring the stock prices in our database so this is physically.io here just as an example and it's monitoring this database whenever there is a change of any of the stock prices of more than five percent this database is going to do a post it's going to do a post a message to this um to the mobile and this mobile it could be let's say twilo as an example it could be twilo here that sends the message to the user or it could be slack right or it could be any any system any messaging application but the, the the key is this line here so whenever there is an event that happens here on our system it does a post to say hey let's post to this user some message and this will be a json right and that message will have a stock to say hey the stock price for that particular ticker or particular group of tickers has changed more than five percent in the last day so that message goes and the user would see that on their phone and they are going to be happy so in what scenarios would the user receive a message they would only receive a message if this event has happened that's the only time they will receive a message so this is where you tend to see it event driven now the second characteristic where uh where a webhook so in this case this is our webhook here that is posting that message to the user. So the second characteristic of a webhook being a reverse API, so the reverse API side of things is, with an API, if we go back up here, an API is typically a pool. So if you think about an API, so let's look at this example that we saw here. The user uh, is on the left side, there is a resource here on the right side. If the user wants to get information from that resource, they do a pull, they do a request to say get, or they might do a post, right? But usually you, you think about trying to access and the user is the one initiating that conversation. They say, hey, this, do this action. They would say, get me this result or post this result. The user is initiating that. The difference between that and the webhook is on the webhook side, the user isn't initiating that or the consuming system isn't initiating that that transaction that event or the action that action is being initiated by the system so the system is doing the monitoring and if there is an event that meets a certain criteria or threshold it does that post to the user and this is where you see the idea of the reverse api coming into play because with webhooks you can have a bunch of different users here or a bunch of different consuming systems here and instead of them doing a pool every five minutes to say you know has the stock price changed has the stock price changed has the stock price changed instead of them doing that every five minutes they just sit put and they wait if a stock price change every five minutes they get the result if it change maybe once a week they get a result but they will be guaranteed to get a result whenever that stock price change and so it's a little bit of a different approach of creating event driven types of architecture uh, so if we go down you have some event some system here that is capable of generating event and from a, from a webhook perspective if, a, if, a, if an event happens it sends it into some consuming systems here 
it sends that message to some consuming systems. So this is a push, push kind of notification. Whereas, and this is webhook. But again, it's a subset of an API. It's still using the REST uh, subset. It's just using the 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 the, uh, the the subset of the REST API. On the other hand, regular APIs, the full blown APIs would be there is a resource here. So resource, it can push and the user is initiating that. It can pull, it can update, it can delete, and the user gets to initiate that, right? So here we have one, two, three, four, but one is always on this side. Whereas on this side, we have one, two, and that's it. It never goes back. The user cannot update the system back with uh, with um, webhook. It's always the, 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 the system here, the resource says, hey, this is ready, and there is your message, and it's just one way. Whereas on this left side here, you can go back and such. So there you go. Hopefully this was helpful for folks. Uh, if you ever wondered what the, a webhook is or what an API is, um, just to recap here, a, an API or, or, or a webhook is a subset of an API. It's just a subset of an API focusing on the post functionality, but there is more with APIs. And where we see this a lot is, you know, we have systems are being built with many subsystems and microservices. They all have to talk and orchestrate each other. Um, if you want a full blown API, go for it, but there might be cases where maybe somebody tweets with a particular hashtag and you want to take that tweet and notify everybody in Slack that, hey, we saw a tweet based on this hashtag. You can have a webhook around that or monitoring stock prices or monitoring uh, uh, events in your systems to say, hey, if my server has less than 50% capacity remaining, I want to send a notification to my service uh, tickets. And uh, you could use a webhook for that. But again, it's just a subset of, a, of an API. So hopefully this was helpful, guys. Uh, as always, uh, if you uh, found this valuable, don't hesitate to like it, share it with anybody that might get value out of it. If you have any questions or topics you want us to break it down uh, on the whiteboard or on the drawing board here, uh, let me know in the comment section below. I'll see what I can do. Uh, thanks for watching. You have been very awesome. I have been through and I'll see you in the next presentation.